Hello fellow battle suits. my name is Video James, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Maxis Dragonoid. So, if any of you don't know, I'm a big Bakugan fan, I've been a fan since it came out way back when, and the one figure that I always desired most above anything else, besides Titanium Dragonoid, was Maxis Dragonoid. And that is not only because of the fact that Defenders of the Core was one of my favorite games as a kid, and I just loved playing with Maxis Drago as well as Neo Drago, but I just absolutely love the design and the look of Maxis Drago. So as you can see, I got all the pieces here. I have customized them, actually. When you get them, they don't come with these colors. They actually come in a silver in all the places that are colored. So I went and I colored them and I made them all look like they actually do in the show, as well as in the game. So, as you can see, I customized them. So it's not going to be a review of the look, per se but it's going to be a review of basically how they would look as their original. So we're going to start this review by reviewing each original Bakugan, well, not original, but each separate Bakugan, and we're going to start with the uh, Ultra Dragonoid that comes with this set. So, as you can see in Sphere Mode, it looks nice. Let's see, we got the little pegs in there for the other pieces of Maxis Drago. Uh, you can see we got nice coloration on the gems and the horns that I actually didn't do that. That kind of golden look is all thanks to the designers and the makers of the Bakugan. Uh, you can see on the sides there is that little area where you can kind of see the face, and that does bug me a little. Kind of bugs me that, like, that one part is just like a giant hole. But, you know, there's some things you just can't control. So, I'm going to set this gate card right here. Uh, this is actually part of my Chaos team that I use sometimes. So I'm going to set this Terra Claw Gate card right here, and I'm going to open up the horns and the feet of Maxis Drago, well, Maxis Drago, Ultra Drago, and then we are going to open him for completion. Um, it's kind of hard sometimes to get the horns out when they're in sphere mode, and unfortunately, this is one of those times with the top horns, I can't really get them to come out. So I'll just open them up here, and there we go, and then we see the horns are actually stuck a bit. So I just pull those out, and there we go. Now, I gotta say, I really like this thing's um, mode when it's open as well. I like that kind of gold paint they got going around the eye and the green that they got. Like, instead of on Neo Drago, how it's only half the eyes painted green, they got the whole one painted green this time. I like the attention to detail that they put on the little teeth down here. They actually painted these teeth white. Um, they did actually take the gem out of the middle here that... Uh, Neo Drago has like a little gem kind of carved in there. This one actually doesn't, but, you know, I kind of wish they did put that there. Uh, the detailing on the claws is very nice, that they're actually like individually sculpted claws, that they are not just like one piece and one block like structure. One thing that does bug me about this part of the Maxis Drago is that these don't actually stay up. They kind of just fall victim to gravity. So you kind of have to hold them and position them however you want with the pieces that you got. Um, as for the coloration, I did really like it a lot. Uh, the yellowing I did myself, like on the wings, I actually did that myself. Just to kind of make it to where the silver wasn't really there. And I actually do like that. Uh, the power level is actually a 650. So it's a decent Pokemon to use on its own. And probably could decently win you a couple battles, depending on how you use it. And then the next thing we have is Gracchus Hound, and um, I believe it's Darkest Hound. I forget the actual names of them, but they are actually what comprises the two legs of Maxis Drago. And they're very similar Bakugan, that they are actually the same kind of body shape. However, they do have different coloration and different kind of styles. That you can see this one, this little dotted shape right here actually connects to a different part. Whereas the dotted shape down here only really is this tiny little part. Um, you can see that it is basically symmetrical on both sides, which I like a lot. I like how it's trying to be as symmetrical as possible. That where the um, attribute symbol on this side is, they put the little peg over here to kind of keep it in a similar place. And when we actually open these guys up, we see they kind of open up and they look like little dogs. And they actually do have feet back here that you can pull out. Um, I don't know why the feet don't go all the way down. I think it's just how they designed it. But 
they do have little feet that actually come out. So you can kind of just open them like that, and then they have the little feet. And they both actually have this feature that they're back here. That you just pull them out like this. And then they have the little feet. Now I gotta say, I really like the design of these things in both of their modes. Um, oh, they also have a little tail back here, I forgot to mention. They got this little, like, little tail back here. You can kind of flip that up. Uh, you got it on both of them as well, so you can kind of just take this one and flip it up too. Now, unfortunately, this one has a line across it, whereas these ones have, um, little dashes. So, it's a nice kind of differentiation. Now, when it comes to the sculpt of the head, I really do like how they differentiated it. That This one really kind of looks more, um, I guess robotic in a way. And this one kind of looks more natural. That these things did kind of oppose each other as, like, polar opposites. But I really do like their design in both their forms. Uh, I kind of wish that the feet and all that weren't so, like, misshapen almost. That you kind of bend them in half when the feet are out and all that. But it does still look very nice. Um, also, the secondary attributes for this one are actually the same. That when you flip them up and you look at the attribute underneath their thing, it actually shows as the same attribute. So you see... This one ends up being a Ventus, and that one ends up being a Chaos. And then moving on, we have what might be my favorite part of this set, the Spider Fencer. So this one, I really like the design of it in terms of like the X shape. Um, I really like that it's not just a simple square or a triangle or something like the others are. And it's actually got that kind of unique, almost tetris -y kind of shape to it. And I do kind of like the little things up here, these little, like, metalish looking parts that kind of have that little um, robotic feel to them. I do like the design of the silver on the sides, that the silver actually does look nice on the legs. The top doesn't actually stay down that much. I kind of wish the top were able to stay down a little more, but even the simplest tap can kind of sometimes just make it fall out. Like, see? It barely even stays in. So I kind of wish that had been fastened a little more. Um, the legs are very easily popped out as well. That they don't want to stay in a lot as much as they should. So it's kind of hard to keep all this guy together. And keep him closed. But then when you open him up. Then there we go. You got the spider fencer opened up. And I really do like the greenish eyes that they gave this thing. It looks really weird. Um, he does have little gold legs down here that you can pull out. Which for the sake of showing you guys I actually will do so you gotta kinda you gotta kinda push on the edge of them and kinda pull them out like that cause you see on this one you can kinda see that it flattens out over here and it kinda makes that little triangle shape so what you do is you kinda just take this and you push this down well not down but you kinda push on it and get the little thing to come out now sometimes they don't want to come out so it's hard to actually get them to uh, move around but typically, I only really ever have trouble with one leg. So, usually it's only one leg that I ever have to really work, like this one. It really doesn't want to ever come out like it should. So, it's kind of hard to get it to work. But after a few tries, I can eventually get it out. And I really do like how with this figure, you can kind of push the legs down. And they'll kind of fasten and lock into a position to where you can make him, like, stand on his own. Like, you can just take the legs... And fasten them like that, and then you got him standing on his own. Or you can take the legs and push them out like so. And then he's kind of got that more robust stance to him. Then we have the Brachium and the Gracium pieces. Now, these guys confused me a lot because I never could figure out which way they went. But it actually does go the Aquas on this side. And the Chaos on this side, in case you're wondering. So it's like, you go, Aquas goes on that side, and Chaos goes on that side, and that's how they actually go together. So, in case you're wondering, or in case you can never figure it out like me, um, that's how they go. But I really like how they use, like, cylinders for the arms, and I do like the design of the shape, that they got the little claws out here, and you got the backs up here. And then we got these little pegs up here for attaching Spider Fencer, that if we wanted to, we could just take Spider Fencer... And he's got these two little pegs up top, so we just flip those out. And we can just take these and flip them like that. 
So now we got two little pegs coming out the top of Spider Fencer. So then we just take this and attach it like that. And I really like that kind of ingenuity that you're able to kind of shape and create the figure the way you want to. It does actually allow for a lot more creativity when it comes to playing with Maxis Drago. And speaking of playing with Maxis Drago, I never know how you're supposed to use it in battle. So if any of you know that, feel free to let me know down in the comments because I have absolutely no clue. But then when it comes to opening these things, fairly simple. You don't really have to pull anything, so you can just do that. So you see, they kind of just open the same way, and they look really similar. Um, for some reason, this one wants to lean to the side. I don't know why that is. But they do also have little um, feet back here that you kind of just take these and kind of just pull them up like that. And there's little pegs that kind of aid you in this in case you can't get them. That You just take the peg and flip it up like that. And then you see... We got those little kind of antenna-like appendages, and then we can do the same thing over here that he's also got these little uh, pegs that we just take these, flip them up, and then we see that we got pegs on this guy as well. Now, you can see really the differences are very clear that Brachium has these little flat kind of legs, whereas Gracium has these really pointy, almost teeth-like ones. And I really like that they tried to define each part of the figure and give it its own unique kind of design. And I really like that they didn't just copy-paste for every piece of the figure. And then moving on to piece number seven and final, we have the, uh, what was the spit arm? The spit arm, which is honestly a weird name for it. I kind of would have believed that it would be an arm piece instead of the main torso piece. But actually, it is the main torso piece. And I really like the triangle design to it. That I kind of like how this Maxis Drago set kind of tried to encompass every shape that they could. Because if you've ever seen the Maxis Helios set, they really only used spheres instead of these kind of shapes. But I really like the kind of shapes that they kind of represent the differences between each type of Bakugan and each type of attribute. But you can see we got this nice kind of gray, um, well, this nice kind of green that I painted. And it does actually look nice. I did, I like the silver on them. The silver didn't look too bad on Spit Arm as it did on the other ones. And admittedly, the silver on Spider Fencer was nice as well. But I kind of just preferred to have him colored in. So when we open Spider Fencer with him, that actually, or Spider Fencer. When we open Spit Arm with him, there actually is no pieces that you need to flip out. It's just plop, and he opens. And I really like that kind of manta ray design that they got going on. That's kind of like, um, well, it's like a manta ray, but it also kind of seems like a little jet pack almost. So now I am actually going to try and assemble this. So this is basically just the way you assemble Maxis Drago. It is very simple. Um, compared to Maxis Helios, it's a bit more complicated. But it is a very simple process. So basically what you do is I always start with the bottom. Just because the bottom is the easiest. So you take uh, the Dragonoid, the two arm pieces, and Spider Fencer. And you kind of just set those aside. And then what you do is you take the two hounds and the spit arm and what you do with the spit arm is you take the face you flip it down you take the wings you fold this part in and push it down and do the same thing with the other side and then what you do is you actually take the back like this little back thing back here and you gotta hold the pieces down to put it in but you put this in and it basically locks everything into place and you see there's this little silver peg in here so you just kinda flip that up and now you have kind of the base for your Drago plus your tail. And then what you do with the hounds is basically you kind of got to put everything away. So you put the tail away. 
put the horns away. You keep the legs out, actually. Now what you want to do is you want to push this part and push it down so that it's kind of locked like that. You'll hear a little click. And then what you do is you take these, you push them this way so that they plug into these little pegs back here. I don't know if you can see them, but there's like these little pegs up underneath the undercarriage. So you just flip these in and the legs have actually little kind of edges that will plug in there. And then what you do is you take this part, you flip the head in, and then you flip this down. And then that'll lock into place as well. And then there's a little peg on the side that we saw earlier. So we just take that, flip it out, and we attach it to spit arm on the left side. And then we see we have the leg, one side completely done. So now we do the same thing for the other one, that we flip this part down, we flip these in, and then we flip the tail down, and we flip the head up, and pull this down, and then pull the peg out, and we have the other leg finished. And then we see we just kind of take those, and we attach them in like so. Now sometimes with me, I don't know if this is a problem with all the sets, but my Drago has the pegs are sometimes unwilling to cooperate, so it does kind of have to be a little bit coerced into actually going in the spot it's supposed to, but... Usually I can get it to work without too much difficulty. And then moving on to the top part, what you actually want to do is first, you want to take Spider Fencer, you want to flip all the pegs back in, and then you want to take the top part and push it down into here again. Then you take these, you unlock them, you put them all back into the unlocked position, and then you just set him aside because he's going to go on the back of Drago. And then what we do is we take the two arms, and we take... Make sure you're doing the right sides, by the way. Um, you take these, you flip them down, and there's a little peg in the back that you can flip out. So you take that, you do that, and the next thing you want to actually do is you want to take the entire figure, the entire back half, and you want to rotate it 180 degrees. Now, I don't know if there's a specific way you have to rotate them, because every time I just rotate them and they seem fine. So I never really encounter any problems, but that's basically what you do, and then you pull off the same kind of schmazow over here, take these, flip them down, pull out the little peg, and then just flip it over like this. And then we see we got the both arms ready, so then now all we do is we take Drago, and I like to hold these out, like these little flaps, I like to hold these out just so that they stay out. And then we take the arms and we kind of just plug them into the pegs on the side. Then we do the same with the other side, that we take this one, hold it out, and we push this peg in here. And there we go. And then we see we got the arms completely finished. Now what we do is we take the spider fencer, and we see we have the two pegs. Now one of the pegs is going to have that little end of the laser in it. You can kind of see there's a little silver thing in there. So you want to take the other peg. Well, the other peg hole. And there's a little peg in the back of Drago that you flip out towards the back. And then what you do is you take Spider Fencer, you hold down the head to make sure it doesn't pop out, and you line up the peg hole with the peg, and you just push down. And then we have the back actually fixed. Now, I like to kind of push these forward, just so they're always kind of like aimed at the front, because they can actually be positioned, whereas the bottom ones can't really be positioned without getting in the way. And then the last thing to do is just take the bottom, flip that peg up, and put Drago on like so. Now there's two pegs on the bottom of Drago you can do this with. That you can see there's two pegs on the bottom. There's one in between his feet, and there's one in back. Now those are kind of meant for different like positioning. That they're meant for, you can flip these out um, almost, and kind of put the bottom peg in. But you can't really do that without kind of separating the pieces of Drago. So basically, you always kind of just take the front peg, you flip that in, and you flip everything into place, and then you just basically assemble Maxis Drago. Now when it comes to the actual figure, I really do like how they kind of concealed everything, that it's not like you're looking at all the Bakugan as if they were open and just mashed together, that everything kind of has that kind of concealed look to them, and you kind of can't really tell where one ends and the other begins. And I really like that because it kind of symbolizes where the mech suit actually comes into play. Because if you don't know, Maxis Drago was designed as a mech suit for Drago to boost his power to over 9,000. 
Yes, I made that joke. Shush. But I really do like how they kind of made it look as if all the pieces kind of went together naturally. That you can see on the bottom. Uh, the legs and spit arm really seem to go together naturally. Uh, the arms kind of don't really look like they go into Drago, which makes sense because all these pieces are traps and mechanical Bakugan, and Drago is actually a natural organism Bakugan. And then we see on the back that we got spit arm and spider fencer, and we got spit arm aiming the cannons up over top, and we got the little tail out here. Now, I really like this tail. This tail is honestly one of my favorite parts of the whole figure, just because of the design of it, that it's got like that kind of reptilian mixed kind of tail feature to it, and I really do like it. And it actually does have a little pattern on the back. I'll turn it this way. But it's got a little pattern on the back that you can kind of see. It looks almost like the back of an alligator almost. And then we see on the back, we actually have, again, the tail. We see the back of the legs. Not much painting back there, which I like, that there's not too much kind of accessorizing going on around the back. Um, and we do have the Pyrus symbol right back here, which I like. Uh, the symbol for the Heos Bakugan actually does get covered up, so you can't really see it as well. But that is actually in part to the fact that this figure doesn't rotate all the way out as it should. That my Heos figure rotates more than my Aquas one should. But I really do like the way the back looks as the front, because both the front and the back look very nice. And the detailing on both sides is very nice, that they kind of made it look like... Each side should be that side. The back, there's not much detailing as you would expect. And then we look at the front, and we actually have a lot more kind of featuresque to them that we got actual pieces of stuff. We've got like faces, we got kind of inner workings and that. And I also like how on the legs, these little silver parts, they actually look like kind of braces. So they actually kind of symbolize the fact that Drago's kind of getting his feet locked into those things like a mech suit. And I really do like the gold paint that they got going on down here as well. Now, if you want to, this is a customizing option. You can also take a uh, spider fencer. You can detach him from the back. And while Maxis Drago is actually full up and armored, you can actually take the pegs that were on top of spider fencer. You can flip the legs out. And you can take these and push them down. And you can kind of just hold those in place and then place Spider Fencer up top. And then we see that we got that kind of armish cannon going on again. So it just takes a bit of working to actually get it in. Ah. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get it in all the way. So you kind of just got to take these and push kind of gently but forcefully so that it'll actually go in and then we can see we got this kind of big giant arm cannon going on here that drago has now got like this giant claw and he can just aim fire and i really like that they gave kind of like optimization that you could kind of position the figure and arrange it almost any way you wanted and i kind of like how there's substitution available for the figure that if one piece breaks and you have a copy of the other part of the piece then you can kind of just swap that in and it'll still make the figure look as if it should so like say this broke and I had to swap it out for a uh, brachium that would actually still look pretty nice since they're both the same figure almost and it does look very decent or say I needed to swap out a leg for a leg well there's not really much difference in the legs already so you can kind of just swap them out and it'll look okay so not really that different, kind of very similar to how it was before. But yeah, I really do like this figure. I would definitely give it a 4 out of 5 just because I love the design of it. Uh, the creation and the kind of um, assembly of it is very intuitive. I do like the coloration that they use. That kind of dark red coloration is very nice. And I like how for Drago they used a different kind of red. So it's like they're kind of separating Drago from the pieces. But overall, I would give it a 4 out of 5. I really do like it. Again, there are some drawbacks like these. They don't stay in place. I kind of wish they did. Um, the figures are very loosely held together. That The figures don't really tend to stay in place if you want to kind of position it. You kind of have to have like those little um, positioning things that people like Shardimus Prime use. Where they kind of position things and it'll stick them in place. 
But overall, I still really like the figure. It is very nice. Um, I forget how much it actually sells for now. I think it's like, I think the price range is 67 to 115 if you can find any for sale. I don't know. It's just, I got this from a Christmas lot from someone I know, so I don't really know how much the actual individual price is because I didn't really know how to look it up. Well, I knew how to look it up. I just didn't look it up. But overall, again, I do really like the figure. I would say go out and get it. Um, there is one thing I forgot to say, that when all the pieces are closed, you can actually still put them together like that, and you can kind of make like a little battle tank almost, and it does look nice as well. But I really only just assembled it like this, I didn't really assemble it as the tank, because that would have just made the video even longer. But regardless, I'm going to leave this video here. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to go actually check this out on the Bakugan Wiki, in case you want to learn more about this figure and this set. Um, it actually is very interesting when you read about it, because it is a very unique concept. But, for now I'm leaving this video here. If you guys liked it, you can slap the like button as always, and I'll see all you beautiful people in the next video.